it is our joy to welcome some dear friends. And I'd like to have you, um, do you trust me to introduce you? It's just too late to find out that now. <laughs> You've trusted me for about 20 years or something like that. Um, the former Attorney General, John Ashcroft, could, be, could have been many, many things and done them very successfully. He could have been a pastor. He's a musician. He was an Attorney General at the state level. He was governor. He was a senator. And he was Attorney General of the United States. And I thank God that he was in office on 9-11. General Ashcroft does a wonderful thing with scripture and with music. And so when we saw this on live stream, I called him. You hadn't even gone to the airport yet, or you were on your way to the airport. And I said, we need to have you come to Monterey. You will be blessed. His accompanist is Joy Wooten, and she works for the president the General Superintendent of the Assemblies of God Church in Springfield, Missouri. And her husband teaches at the seminary or the Evangel University. So it's really a real privilege to have the three of you here. And um, I don't need to give you a mic because you have your own. Welcome. Thank you. Can I give you Thank a you. Hand? Okay. Thank you very much. Good morning, and thank you for welcoming me. I, uh, I'm delighted to be here with you. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. <laughs> I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. What a wonderful thing it is to be with you. And what a kind person. Yes, I do trust you. <laughs> you know, she told you that I had been a state auditor and attorney general and governor and senator she didn't tell you about all the elections I lost. <laughs> I lost elections in three out of the last four decades of the last century. I'm the only person in the history of the universe to have lost his Senate seat to a deceased opponent. <laughs> I, I don't know how they choose pastors in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Well, I'll bet you they don't choose dead guys instead of you. That's a, if you want God to humble you sometime, be replaced by... Never mind. I, uh, you, I don't know. It, apparently, it's legal to laugh. Uh, so I'll just tell I, I love life because it has its ups and downs. And remind, I need your help on this just a little bit. It's a great story about... If I say something positive, I'd like for you to say, ah, so, ah, yeah, ah, ah. Something that's sort of troublesome, we say, ooh, ooh. So it goes sort of like this. I had a friend who fell out of an airplane. Ooh, yeah. But he had a parachute on. Ah. But the parachute wouldn't open. Ooh. But he was headed for a haystack. Ah. Haystack had a pitchfork in it. <laughs> but he missed the pitchfork. Of course, he missed the haystack. I mean, you know, this is... This is <laughs> oh, that won't be on the quiz or the final exam. It's just that, that's free. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> Every once in a while, you get the audience too involved, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, knowing that the Lord is with you gives us the ability to 
do what every political scientist wants to do in a campaign, wants to end the campaign on an ah instead of on a new. And we know how the campaign's going to end. Ah is right. Ah, Lord God. Ah. So, uh, I have become concerned in my own fellowship. How many of you have one of these little black books? This is not the normal definition of a little black book. This, this happened to be something that I was asked to do at the General Council of the Assemblies of God in Orlando. So you have that uh, identification on the front of the book. But I have a real burden in my heart that we have the word of God spoken in our churches by the people of our churches. Not just spoken to them or spoken at them, but that the people participate in the word of God. And in our tradition, we have drifted some from having the congregation actually participate in singing hymns and gospel songs. So much as sung to them and sung at them, the professionalization of the church has sort of bothered me because I have deep within me this understanding of what that my heritage of hymns and gospel music has meant to me, has meant to me. Uh, I believe that the music that you have in your life will tattoo your soul. We are uh, concerned about sons and daughters who want to get a tattoo. We say, you don't know how permanent that is. Don't put the wrong name on your arm. You know. And uh, how many of us have stood at the bedside of a dying loved one or a friend who seemed to be incapable of knowing or responding to anything else but when the, the themes of the great hymns of the church have been there somehow they touched you, touched them. There was a consciousness not there before. Um, at great risk, would you please close the doors? I don't want anybody leaving when I go to the piano here. Uh, uh, at great risk, I want to tell you a story. It seems like every day when I wake up, there's a song in my heart. Part of that tattoo. Be very careful. Uh, if you look, I think, in one of the back pages of this little pamphlet. Let me make the songs of a nation, and I care not who makes its laws. Andrew Fletcher, Scotland, 1703. A member of the Scottish Parliament 200, 300 years ago understood that what we put in our hearts through singing makes a big difference. One morning, I think it was the first Tuesday in November in the year 1994, I was on the ballot for the United States Senate. And I went into my normal routine of the morning, which means I don't really have anything that, well, controls me. I was wandering a little toward the living room, and I almost always go to the piano and sit down at the piano. And I started to play a little tune. It was election day. The first Tuesday in November is not an ordinary day for guys in, in my setting and situation. And I just sat down and started to play this tune. Songs, keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race that I must wait. There's a race that I must run. This was Tuesday. This was election day. I said, Oh, hallelujah, there's a race that I must run there are victories to be won give me power every hour to be true sing that with me keep 
at the time I thought oh, there's a race that I must run there are victories to be won but the prayer that I need to pray every day not just election day not for is give me power every hour to be true so I I thought how in the world is it that I would try and encourage us not to forsake the reading of scripture and the singing of some of these great themes and there's one other thing that I, is a big burden on my heart it's the fragmentation of, of Christ, Christians in the, in the churches I, I really want to embrace and love people who love Jesus Amen. and I'm not too worried about frankly I'm not as worried as you might be about what day they love Jesus on. I want it to be every day. I, think, I don't think there is such a thing as a bad day to worship the Lord. <laughs> and so I want to embrace all the... And, and uh, so I, I, I developed this idea for a different kind of service. And uh, I would like to ask you to participate in it with me. It helps us revalue some of these great old hymns. It helps us read together aloud the word of God because I believe that if we put the word of God into the mouths of people it will find its way to their hearts and once in their hearts it will find its way to their hands and to their feet so I've, I'm, I know I'm talking to a lot of preachers here and it scares the dickens out of me but I'm <laughs> Because I know that you have a different approach to most services, but this is to, to read the scripture and to sing songs that illustrate, elaborate on the scripture. And uh, so I'm going to ask you to conduct this service with me. And let's see if I can find a pair of glasses here. If you would, please, would you stand with me and join in reading a, a variety of verses that are found on the second page. It says, the Bible's instruction to sing. Now, I've not been to theology school, and I didn't pay as much attention in Sunday school as I should have. But I don't know whether it's a commandment if it doesn't have a number in front of it. But these sound like commandments to me. And whether or not they have a number, I think we ought to embrace them. So let's read together, if you would, please, the Bible's instruction to sing. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving, sing praise upon the harp unto our God. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Just a little comment. One of the most charming things in Scripture to me is, a, is what for me would be an obscure verse, I think, in Zephaniah. Where it says, the Lord rejoices over us with singing. <laughs> Just the idea 
of God singing. Have you thought about that? What does he sound like? Does he sound like a choir? Is it a lot of voices? I bet it's harmonic. At least three-part harmony for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And just can you rejoice in the fact that God rejoices over you with singing? Does that make you want to sing or not? Well, I'm not going to let you sing yet. Because I've got to take you to my favorite verses in all the Bible. Now, I've developed some services like this out of other verses, and I'd be pleased to talk to you about them sometime. But the 103rd Psalm is just an incredible piece of literature. Now, if you don't mind, here's what we're going to do this morning. We will read these first five verses of the 103rd Psalm all the way through. Then we will read it down to the music sign. Then we'll flip over in the book to read and sing the song. Then we'll do the next one. And let the, let the Spirit of God minister to you as you bless the Lord in your singing. Together now, the 103rd Psalm. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. <laughs> who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Before you sit down, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction 
who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You may be seated, please. Before we sing this song about the benefits, let me just say it. All the benefits, as far as I can determine, flow from Calvary. And the first song we sang was by Andre Crouch, a Church of God in Christ minister. Kojic, I think they call it for short, from Southern California, African-American. Great songwriter. Wrote The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power. <laughs> wrote all so many things. This song written by Jenny Hussey. Jenny was a Quaker woman. I love the way the songs of the church bring us together and knit our hearts together. We are one in the bond of love. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory Lest I forget thy Psalm 103, we're going back to the same, same break point. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. They Yes. 
song was a contemporary, I believe, uh, about of the beginning of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the 1860s. A Baptist fellow, and the next song is written by a, a Baptist gentleman who was born in Beulah, Kansas, and died in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Now, that doesn't mean a lot to most of you, but that bracket's where I live. And to think that I was, I am, I've always been surrounded by Baptists in, in southwest Missouri, and I'm glad, it's, I'm glad they're there. What a wonderful song it is. It rejoices at the next break in the 103rd Psalm. Let's go back. And, you, you know, I, I, I conducted this service in one setting, and a guy came up to me and says, you tricked me into memorizing the 103rd third psalm. I don't believe in trickery, but I believe in memory. And the Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart that. Um, I don't want to sin. And the Bible says, if I'll put the word of God in me, I won't. I like that place in Isaiah. No, yeah, maybe it's Isaiah. It says, the, uh, His word shall not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish that which I please in the thing whereto I sent it. Just think of the power of God's word. There's reason to memorize it. It will do what God intended it to do according to his word. Sometimes young people come to me and say, well, I'm worried about the will of God. It's maybe heresy, and I hope it's not offensive to you. I says, I don't worry about the will of God. I worry about the word of God. And if I put the word of God in me, the will of God will take care of itself. I, there's another place in this pamphlet where I've written, the word of God is the will of God expressed in writing. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. You may want to stand for this one. Please join me.
<laughs> That's thrilling. And somebody went up and hit the next story on that at the last. For I'm saved, saved, saved. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord before you sit down. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases.
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle's. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. You may be seated. this next song probably as well as you know anything I can't imagine any children of God not knowing and loving this song written by Fanny Crosby Fanny Crosby is probably one of the most inspiring people ever to walk the face of this earth as far as I could tell accidentally blinded when she was three months old by a when the doctor was out of town and someone else tried to administer medicine to her eyes and, and what was her response to that her response was one that I will bless the Lord because the first face I see will be the face of Jesus and she wrote over 8,000 hymns they got so afraid of putting her hymns in hymn books that she wrote under 200 different names and blessed assurance and to God be the glory and who redeemeth thy life from destruction redeemed how I love to proclaim it redeemed how I love to proclaim redeemed by the
Thank God for the Methodist. She, I tell you what, Fanny Crosby, what an inspiring, inspiring instrument of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. I think you got the idea so far. Guess what we're going to do next? <laughs> bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. this psalm was easy for me. I could go into my inventory of gospel songs and hymns, come up with song after song. I couldn't find one that fit this next verse. Lots of songs about crown him with many crowns. But the idea that God crowns us, oh, this is overwhelming to me. I I can hardly talk about it. I've had a few positions of some authority in my life. And uh, the first thing that came to me was, what kind of crown did you wear? When you have authority, what kind of crown do you wear? Most crowns are authoritarian and reek of power capacity for compulsion. Crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Wow. Convicted me right away. As a Christian, I want to wear a crown of loving kindness and tender mercies. then almost as if it were a, you know, have you ever thought you were crossing a one-way street and it was a two-way street and you almost stepped in front of the car? It hit me like a ton of bricks to, this, this 103rd Psalm says he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. And then I thought, what kind of crown did we give him? It, what an anomaly that we gave him a crown of thorns. That's the kind of crown we deserve. And he gives us a crown of loving kindness and tender mercies, the kind of crown that he deserves. So not being able to find a song to fit this verse, you're gonna have to suffer through one that I wrote. So I, we don't have a lot of time here, folks. Sure, the presence of the Lord does funny things to the clock. But I would like for you to try and sing this with me. And uh, I hope you can capture some of the same sense that the wonder, the magnificence, the generosity, the love, the compassion of the Lord who gives us a crown that he deserves and wore a crown that we deserved that we who once were lost and condemned might innocent be found. So it goes something like, No crown do I deserve
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Well, you can see that I've missed few meals in my life. I don't ever remember having gone to bed genuinely hungry. I've missed a few hot fudge Sundays at bedtime, but never gone to bed hungry. And my first thought about this verse was, uh, the Lord provides for us the sustenance we need. And indeed he does. But maybe it's just the way I, I have a few screws that are loose up here. I thought, wait a second. Maybe this verse is a much, as much about what satisfies our mouth going out of our mouth as it is about what satisfies our mouth coming in. 
And Ruthie, I didn't know about the B word and the theme here. Of course, the 103rd Psalm is about bless and blessing, blessing the Lord. But this idea that we might be blessed by God, by our mouth's satisfaction in saying and doing good things. As a matter of fact, I think if you want to feel young, start speaking good things. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. If you want to feel old, think about how few things are exciting to you anymore. How that really doesn't excite you and doesn't inspire you. And how bad things are. I'm so glad that we have the ability not only to ingest, to speak the Word of God, to hear it, to read it. We have the opportunity to share it. And we share the goodness of God. Our mouth is satisfied with good things, not good things coming in, but good things going out. And our re youth is renewed like the eagles. Well, I think his name is Widmeyer. C.B. Widmeyer was the president of Point Loma University in Southern California. Some, there must be some Southern Cal people around here today. Yeah, you know where Point Loma is and you know where the university is. Wow, it ought to be illegal to go to school in a place that pretty. I mean to tell you, they ought to, wow. And he wrote this song about Jesus preparing food for the disciples. And um, I love this song. Now, it may be a little fast for you folks. I don't know. And I don't know whether you know this song, but this is a real song of rejoicing. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. To the hungry call it. Now come and dine. Let's sing it together. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen. by the master to which I don't respond and perhaps the most 
meaningful of all gospel songs to me is a hymn of response which expresses an understanding of God's generosity in accepting us. If Jesus invites me to the table, I don't want to hesitate. And I just want to say I come not because I'm entitled, not because I'm worthy, but I come as I am, as you have called me. And I believe that you receive me unto yourself. Just Just as I am, thou wilt receive. Just as. 